Hey, everybody. Okay, let me know if you guys can hear me. You should be able to. Let me know if you can hear me. But hello, everybody, and welcome to Angel B Designs. I'm Angel B. Thank you so much for being here. I do want to start off this live by saying that it is a live. Um, what that means is that um, we're going to be interactive. We're going to be, you know, I answer questions. We talk. I might, you know, if I have a story, I might tell you a story, but mostly we're interactive. Um, if you have questions, you are more than welcome to ask. But if you're looking for something that's more step by step, head on over to my YouTube channel. And I do have um, over 400 videos there where they're step by step tutorials. Um, but for today's live, like I said, it is going to be interactive. I am going to be answering questions. I am going to be going obviously way slower than a 20 minute, you know, tutorial, video tutorial. Um, but in today's live, you guys, I'm doing something a little different, bringing back Canva. Um, I haven't gotten into Canva in a little while. Um, but that was basically for anybody who has been with my channel since day one, that is how I got started or what I was doing when I first got started with my channel was Canva Pro. Um, but that's what we're going to be doing today. I did get a lot of, so I don't know if you guys saw these shirts, I want to say a little bit before Valentine's Day, but then definitely kind of like around Valentine's Day. Um, a lot of people were ordering and or making shirts like this um, for their significant others. Um, and a lot of people were using either DTF or DTG, which is the number one preferred method if you're going to go with a shirt like this. I would definitely say go DTF or DTG if you can. However, there are a lot of us who are still not into DTG at all. A lot of people who are still not into DTF at all. So while ordering transfers is an option or just ordering from somebody who can make you a DTF or DTG shirt is also an option. If this is something that you want to make yourself Today, I'm going to show you how to do it. So we're going to design it in Canva. I'll show you how to make this image, like removing the background, doing things like that, um, designing the actual image. And then I'm going to be using Caesar Easy Subly to do this project. And then I'm also going to be using probably, I'm thinking, block vinyl as well as brick or puff. I haven't really decided yet one of those. Um, but I made this earlier for Instagram, for my reel on Instagram. And there's a couple little things that I needed to change that I noticed. Um, it's going to make a, it, it's kind of like a difference between if you're going to go DTF versus Caesar Easy Subway. So there's a couple little changes that I need to make, and I'm going to point this out and I'm going to show it to you so that you understand that if you're going to do this in DTF, you can do it one way versus if you're going to do Caesar Easy Subly or even if you want to do Caesar DTV um, or the PPD transfer, something like that. Um, the way that I'm about to show you today is how you should do this. Now, the way that I originally did this is how you would do it if you were doing DTF. However, because this is not DTF, you'll kind of see how it just doesn't look as good as it could look if it were DTF. And we'll get into that, I'll show you. But first, um, like I said, um, this is a live. So if you are catching the replay, it's a live, it's gonna be on the longer side, it's not gonna be a 20 minute tutorial, nothing like that, okay? Um, but I'm gonna start off by saying hello to the people who are here because y'all don't have to watch me you could be anywhere else doing anything else, but you're here crafting with me and I appreciate it. Okay, let me scroll on up to the top here. Hey, Miss Parker, how are you? Hey, Bernice. Hey, Marta. Hey, Carla. Hey, Marilyn. How are you? 
Hey Patricia and Robin S and Michelle. Hey Debbie Myers. And you guys, everything that I'm using in today's to, to or live, I think I believe I did link it down below. If I didn't, I'll add a link or a comment um, at some point, but I did link everything, hopefully. All right. Um, hey, I think I said Michelle and Debbie and Sonia. Old school music, Kimball, how are you? Hey, Porgy Town. Hey, Denisha. Hey, Kamala. Hey, Erica. Hey, Sherry. Spin House Designs and Candice. Hey, Myrna. Hey, Selena. Hey, Crafting is My Business. Hey, Louise. And Natasha. And Bridget. And Cheryl. And... Daisy, hello everybody. Okay, so I'm going to scroll on down to the bottom. I wanted to kind of get started on time today just because I'm not sure how long this is going to take me. It might be on the longer side. I'm not for sure, but um, I did want to start on time because if it's going to be longer, then, you know, I don't want it to be too, too long. Hey, Emma, thank you. And welcome. Hey, Patrice Boo, how are you? Okay. All right. So I am going to, we're going to jump right into it. We're going to start off in Canva Pro. Okay. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to jump right into Canva Pro. Now, I'm going to um, start this off by saying that um, while this can possibly be done, a lot of it can be done in the free version. Um, as far as like exporting the high resolution um, images, I think you are going to need Canva Pro for that. Um, just because when you go to try to download in the free version, you can. It's just that you're not going to get the best resolution um, and things like that. You're going to get distortion, um, pixelation, things like that. So if you can swing Canva Pro, I would definitely suggest um, going that route. OK, now, remember when I said that there was going to be some differences between a design that you use for DTF and a design that you use for Easy Subly? I'm going to go ahead and point those out now. So I have two, um, two designs here. This was the original one that I made for the shirt that I have sitting on my table. This is the one that I made because originally, because I don't know if you guys remember, I said last week I was going to um, do some DTF. You guys, my DTF printer is giving me the blues. I cannot get it to print for whatever reason. It's like it starts printing and then it doesn't keep going. And then it doesn't print more than two pictures or two images at one time. And it's just giving me a really hard time. So I'm going to have to set up a Skype with Pro Color to try to figure this out. But that's why we're doing Easy Subly instead of DTF. So I originally made this image for DTF. Now, if this was going to be printed on DTF, this would be a really good image. The DTF, as far as like the little stars here, the DTF would be able to go ahead and pick it up. The um, like the gradient here would be able to be picked up with DTF. That's also able to be picked up with DTG as well. So if you're going DTF or you're going DTG, using this kind of image with those little details would be fine. However, for today's image, um, when I did that on this shirt that I have sitting on my table, um, and let me stop sharing so you guys can see it, okay? When I did this image with Caesar Easy Subly, I don't know if it's going to pick it up, and let me try to see if I can get my computer to pick it up. If you look right here, like this star here, right? On the part that cuts out here that's actually touching the black, it just looks like a white blob. Okay? 
you can see this the star kind of here because it's on the image but once it gets to the shirt do you see how it doesn't look the same and it just kind of looks like like white paper that i didn't weed or something see here it looks normal but then right here it doesn't you see what i'm saying um and then right here as well like on the image it looks like a star but then when it gets to the black on the shirt it just looks weird so um with those smaller details like that these kind these stars didn't necessarily transfer all the way when it went to getting it onto the shirt now if the star was just simply straight on the image then it would have looked better but because some of the 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 little starlight some of it went onto the actual fabric it just kind of looked a little funky so when you're doing caesar easy subly um you, you I would say remove those. You see how that just kind of looks a little funky right here? It just doesn't look good. That's number one. So let me go ahead and share again so I can show you what I'm talking about. And maybe I should split my screen. That might be a little bit easier. Okay, so these stars here, like I said, if that were to be printed on DTF, you guys, I'm pretty sure it would look just fine. It wouldn't, it, it wouldn't have any issues. Um, but because this is easy subly, that's why it just looks a little funky like that. Um, so for this image, I did go ahead and remove those. The second piece was this gradient here. Let me show you again, or let me stop sharing again. So with Caesar Easy Subly, it's not going to pick up a gradient effect. So as you can see, my little blob, white blob here at the bottom, it just looks like a weird blob. It just looks like a white, a, a white rectangle. It's not, it's not able to pick up the gradient effect. Okay. Um, so it just kind of looks like a weird little white triangle or a white um, rectangle. It doesn't, oh, let me share again, sorry. So it's not picking up this gradient effect here. So when you're doing Caesar Easy Subly, there would be no need to use gradient either. Um, because the Caesar Easy Subly is not going to pick up the gradient effect. But again, DTF and DTG would. So the method that you're using truly depends on, or the way that you design your image truly depends on the method of printing that you're going to do. So for the Caesar Easy Subly, I decided I was going to go ahead and change it to kind of like, um, like a watercolor kind of paint splat. And hopefully when we print this out, it'll look a little bit better. Not that it looks bad. It's just, a, you know, a couple little tweaks that I think need to be made that would make the shirt look better. Okay. So I wanted to explain the difference between um, designing techniques when using DTF versus the easy subly. Okay. But I am going to make this from scratch and show you guys how we got here as well. Um, I'm going to go into the chat and see if there was any questions I missed <sighs> or anything like that. Thank you, boo. I have a whole 500 year old rule. Really, Michelle? Why do you hate it? Yeah, hopefully I'm able to answer some questions. Okay, um, Patrice, I'm gonna call you because I don't know what's going on with my printer. Uh, LaShonda's been a member for six months. <laughs> Y'all, is my bell super loud? It sounds so so loud to me. Mm, LaShonda, why couldn't you get Easy Subly to work for you? I'm doing everything today. So I'm going to show you guys how I cut it off the roll, how I put it in my printer. I did remove my rollers as well. I'm going to show you everything. So hopefully 
you know, I can answer some questions. Viola's been a member for seven months. I watched all of the series that you shared last week. What did you think of it, Viola? You think the gradient's not picking up because of the easy? Yes, I think that the gradient isn't picking up because of the easy subly. The easy subly is a flat white. Um, uh, so this is the easy subly. And because you're printing on top of it, and it's a flat white, you know, kind of piece of paper, it's not really able to pick up the gradient effect because we're not printing on a trans. I mean, we're, we are printing on a transparent background, but we're not at the same time, if that makes sense. Um, so because this is kind of a flat white rather than printing on like a transparent film, um, like you will with DTF, that's why it's not able to pick up the gradient effect. The ink just didn't dry and it's okay. Hmm. Yeah, let me know. I, I don't use Illustrator. All right. The ink would not dry. So my ink doesn't dry either. I don't, what do you mean it didn't dry? A lot of people say their ink didn't dry. It doesn't. Mine doesn't dry either, but I mean, um, I can't remember if we were told it does dry or doesn't dry. Now I would have to go back and watch um, Patrick's live. I can't remember, but mine doesn't technically dry either. I just work around it. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start off designing. So I'm starting with a blank black canvas here because I'm going to be putting this on a black shirt. Whenever I am designing an image, um, I kind of want to use the color canvas that I plan on putting on. So if I'm making an image for a black shirt, I kind of want my canvas to be black so I can just see how it's going to look. If I want it to be universal, like black and white, I'll switch my canvas color between black and white just to make sure that whatever it is I'm doing will look good on black or white. Okay. So we're going to start off going to the upload. So I have already uploaded my images here. Um, and I'm basically just going to be picking images. So this is one is going to be the center image. And then we're just going to kind of work our way outwards. Okay. Um, so this is the first image that's going to be kind of in the middle, but I don't want the background. So we're going to, with this selected, we're going to go up to edit photo. And then we're going to select the background remover. The background remover, I am pretty sure is a pro feature. And then as you can see, it did go ahead and remove the whole background. Okay. So this is our first image. Now I'm just going to kind of start to layer outwards. So I'm going to add in another image. We're going to go up to edit photo, background remover, and it went right off. And then I want this image to be in the back. So we're going to go up with it selected. We're going to go up to position and backward. And then I'm going to go back to uploads. We're going to grab another image here. And with it selected, we're going to remove this background as well. And then we want to position this backwards. So we're going to, with it selected, select position. And I want to put that one to the back. 
And then to kind of tilt it, when you have your image selected, there's going to be a circle here with some arrows going to the left and to the right. That's how you kind of rotate your image. And all we're doing right now is just kind of bringing in images, layering them, adding them, adjusting them. I'm using my other picture for reference because I don't remember how I designed it exactly. So I'm just going to scroll up for reference if you guys have any questions um let me know if i'm moving too fast let me know i'm just gonna kind of design here and talk you guys through it But designing is all about basically just placement. It's picture placement. And then it's also going to be adding in elements. So when you get, you know, the elements that you want, you're just going to layer those in as well. And let's see, position to the back. I was going to show you guys how to make gang sheets in Canva as well, but y'all, I could not get my doggone printer to work. It was just not acting right. And all I've been doing is just bringing in images and removing the background on them. Not not doing anything crazy just yet. Okay. So that looks to be about what I designed before. That looks about the same. So the middle image I want to kind of, which is this one here, I wanted to kind of stand out a little bit, like a little separate from the rest of the images, um, kind of like have an outline around it. So it just kind of pops a little bit. So with this middle image selected here, we're going to go to edit photo. And then under FX effects, we're going to select shadows and we're going to select outline. And then you can change the color of your outline. I'm going to leave it black. You can change the size. If you wanted to make it blurry, you can do that. Or if you just want it to be, you know, not blurry. Um, I don't want the size to be huge. I just want it to be, I just want it to be just a little bit more noticeable because it's kind of like the, the, the center and then everything else is just kind of going outwards around it, if that makes sense. Okay. Now here's where you can add in like the starry effects if you wanted to. Um, I know some people, I saw some people who have shirts like this, they had like um, some of the background, they had like watercolors in the background. Um, like here's where you can really make the image your own and kind of just do so let me show you. Let me go up to elements here. This is, The elements is where you're going to find like pretty much anything that you need. So like this is the watercolor type of background I was talking about. So if I wanted to position this to the back and I wanted this to be my background, I would just make sure it was in the back. Really, you would start from there, honestly. But um, 
you would just make sure that it was in the back and then you can play around with the colors. With this one, I don't believe you can change the colors on this one. Some of them you can. Um, but be careful with the watercolors, um, like the gradient ones like this. Those tend to not really show up that well when you're doing the Caesar um, Easy Subly. But if you're doing DTF or DTG, it will. It would have to be more solid like this. Something like this would show up pretty good with the Easy Subly. Okay, so for this, I'm just going to use this here. This is called a white watercolor splash, but because it doesn't necessarily have like gradient to it, because down here you kind of see these harsh lines, right? Now, if you like that or you don't really, it, that doesn't really bother you, um, you can leave it like this. But for me, I just want to cover that up. I just, you know, I don't necessarily like the way that the harsh lines look. So I'm just going to add this here. And like I said, because of the fact that this is not necessarily gradient, the easy subly should be able to handle this, uh, this white splash here. And then I'm just going to get some text here and I'm going to add in my name. And then the words, the wife, I'm going to do in um, vinyl just to kind of give it a little pop. And then with my text highlighted, I'm going to also add an effect to the text, which is just kind of like a drop shadow. Okay, and that's all I want to do for this image. Now, like I said, if you're designing it, you can really play around with it and make it, you know, what you want. If you go into elements, like I said, you can, if you wanted to add maybe like a wedding ring. Canva has so many different elements that you can kind of play around with. Um, so if you wanted to add in... I'm not really seeing one I would add in. Maybe something like this. Let's see if I can change the color. Like if you wanted add it, if you wanted to add this like to the background or something. You know, just play around with it. You can make it your own. Okay, so before I print this or download this, I am going to select everything and I'm going to group it so that it's one, one image here that I can work with. And I'm actually, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this page and I'm gonna work with this one because I already, you know, kind of already made it. Okay, so this looks pretty good. I'm happy with this. I don't really need to do anything else to it. This is the updated one for the Caesar Easy Subly. Um, I'm going to leave this one alone for when I can get my DTF printer to print. But for printing, um, you want this to be, you want this to print in as high re resolution as you can get it. Okay. So we're going to go up to share. We're going to go to download. And we are going to download as a PNG, but with this size, we're going to pull it all the way up because this is going to give you the highest resolution, okay? It's not going to change the size of the image, the actual image. It changes the size of the resolution so that we have the best resolution possible when we're going to go print. If you keep the standard size, um, I think... Uh, I don't remember what Canvas standard um, PNG download is, but it's really low. Okay. And then we want this to have a transparent background as well. The compressed file option, a lot of people ask me what that's for. That would be like, let's say I was making a thumbnail for YouTube or I was making a thumbnail for Etsy 
um, for a listing or something like that, and I didn't necessarily want to watermark it, you would check this when you go to download it, it's going to compress your file. So let's say somebody tried to screenshot your Etsy listing, the thumbnail of your Etsy listing, and you use the compressed file to upload as your thumbnail. When they go to screenshot it, it's going to look so blurry. They're not going to be able to do anything with it because you compress the file. So if somebody tried to screenshot it, number one, screenshotting already lowers the quality. But the fact that you put the thumbnail as a lower quality compressed file, they're really gonna have a hard time trying to steal it. That's if you like forget to watermark it, your um, item, or if you wanna upload to Facebook or something like that, you can download the compressed file um, because it would, it just makes it harder for people to be able to kind of screenshot and steal it because the resolution will be so low. So obviously for this, I'm not gonna check that because I need the resolution to be high. And then I'm going to download page two, which is this one here. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and push download. I'm gonna scroll the comments, see if there's any questions I missed. Oh, we have a new member. Thank you for joining the channel. I appreciate you. This is Canva Pro. Hey, everybody popping in. Hey, Delanda, how are you? Okay, I don't see any questions. I will keep on going. All right, I'm going to go ahead and... Mm, drag this to my desktop and then we're going to go into Leonardo Design Studio. So this is my plan. This was my vision for the second shirt that I'm doing because the first one that I did, I like it, but I'm like, mm, I can do a little bit better. So this was my vision. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a new canvas here. Okay. And I'm going to bring and we're going to start with the image which is this one here that I just did. And this is gonna be a print and cut, so we're gonna select next. And then it's gonna do all of its masking, smoothing, tracing the contours, all those good things. I don't really know if I like the way that Angel B looks. Hold on. Hey, everybody popping in. How are you guys? Okay, so we do have a lot of little cuts around here. I'm going to... If you wanted to change the, the contour, right, and how much it cuts, you would play with this here, the minimum contour area. So we could take it all the way down and then we'll have a whole bunch of little cuts. I'm gonna take it up just a little bit. So we're still gonna have a lot of cuts, but just get rid of some of those tiny, tiny intricate cuts. And then I'm gonna select next. And then we can play with the offset. Um, I'm not going to do that, though. I want it to be low. I don't want like a white offset or nothing. And then we're going to select finish. All right. So here is our image. Now, I do want this to be on the bigger side because this is going on a large shirt for my husband. So I'm going to make this 11. Now I'm also going to switch this to a map. Okay. 
And then for a quick second, I'm going to turn print and cut off so that we can make our vinyl portion of it. Okay. So this is the, um, the image that we're going to use, but I do want to add in the word, the wife, kind of like how I had it here. And then I was thinking this top word will be brick and then maybe this will be flock. I think that's how I'm going to do it because I'm extra. Okay, so I'm going to go down to text here and I'm going to type in the word the white or the words the wife. And this is the name of the font I'm using, Bajas 93. I'm not for sure if this was a Leonardo Design Studio font. If it's not, then I got it from Creative Fabrica. That's where I get all my fonts if they're not like within the software already. And then I'm going to select apply. And I'm going to make the words 10.5, just a hair smaller than the image. And then I'm going to turn it red so we can go ahead and see it clearly. Now I'm going to move this image out of the way for just a second. And I'm going to add some copies here. So this one is going to be the top one. I want that a little bit separate. So what I'm going to do is just kind of line these up. And I want them to be evenly spaced, obviously. Or as evenly spaced as I can get it. And I think I need to add one more just because our image is pretty big. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to line them up to make sure they're nice and centered. And then I'm going to group them. Now what I'm going to do is place my image on top. And I'm going to kind of arrange it within the words because we can make this bigger once we, you know, kind of get it aligned. Okay, so I I like that. So now what I'm going to do, I don't want to layer my Easy Subly on top of any flock vinyl because it's going to, the longevity, it's not going to be good. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to um, do the knockout effect on these words so that our Caesar, our Caesar Easy Subly layer will be layered directly on top of the fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my image. We're going to go down to cut contours. Oh, I need the image selected and we're going to go to build contours. And we're going to select edit editable contour. And then we're going to go ahead and add uh-oh, my computer is moving slow. What is going on? I'm going to make this 0 0.051 and select apply. Okay, and then the top, the top image, we're going to move that out of the way for now. So now we have our words. And now we have the, the contour that we just created for our image. We're going to select both layers, the red and the black layer. We're going to go down here to the weld panel. 
and we're going to remove front. Now I'm going to zoom in just a little bit because I want to show you guys something. Um, once you remove front, you're going to get like little tiny pieces like this one here and this one here. I don't particularly need those. Like if you, um, when you go to weed these pieces out, you're not even going to notice that they're there. And really they're just going to look like extra pieces and kind of get in the way. So what I do is I like to just get rid of them. And to do that, I'm going to select and right click. We're going to go down to paths. We're going to ungroup the paths. And now I can select this tiny little piece here and I can just delete it. Same with this one. We're going to select, right click, go to paths and ungroup paths. And then we're going to select this tiny piece and just delete it. And now we're going to select all of these words because I want these all to cut together. And I'm going to group them go back to paths and combine the paths. And now the image should sit nicely right inside the words. And then the word, the wife or the words will just get added right to the top. So these will be flock. This is going to be Caesar easy subly. This is going to be brick. Or should I do puff? I don't know. Break or puff. We'll do one of them. All right. I know that seems like a lot. Any questions? Sorry I haven't been in the chat. I didn't want to be here all, all night. So I was just trying to hurry up and get this part over with because we still have to cut and press. Hey, Demsboo, how are you? Hey, everybody popping in. Everybody in the bushes. I'm just scrolling to see if there's any questions. Hey, everybody. Oh, no, Didi, I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you, Viola. Um, you're a member, so I do have a lot of video Canva um, beginner tutorials um, if you haven't seen them already. But definitely try the free version. The free version does have a lot of stuff that you can do. Um, so you don't have to jump right into uh, the, the pro version. Definitely play around with the free version, see if you like it, and then work your way up. Okay, so now we're going to have two different oper operations. Obviously, we're going to have a flock, I mean a, um, a vinyl setting, which is going to be the cut setting, and then we're going to have a print and cut as well. And I do believe we have to do them separate. So I'm going to do... I'm going to do the easy subly first. Okay, so I'm going to grab these, the two vinyl layers and just kind of move them out the way. And then we're going to uh, check our print and cut job again. Now, I've already resized it. I re just resized the whole thing, so I'm not going to mess with the sizing for both the vinyl um, and the print and cut layer. I did just size it. I made it 10.8, the whole thing, 10.8. Um, so now that I have them separate, I cannot resize this because then it'll be bigger than this. And we don't want that. So I'm not going to resize it, but I'm going to go ahead and send design. I'm not going to touch any of this and we're going to go ahead and click send. Um, now I'm going to be printing from my Epson EcoTank 8550. So we're going to 
uncheck mirror because when you're working with Caesar Easy Subly, you do not mirror because you are picking it up and putting it back down. When you mirror, you're taking your paper and you're flipping it over. That's why you need to mirror it. When you're picking something up and you're putting it back down, you do not mirror. You only mirror when you flip. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So if you have your paper and you're flipping your paper over to press, you have to mirror. If you're taking your paper and you're picking it up and putting it back down, you do not mirror. Okay. So with Caesar Easy Subly, we're going to be picking it up with a masking and putting it back down. So there's no mirror need here. I'm going to show you my printer settings. I am going to be using Super B setting because I'm printing 13 by 19. I do have to get my paper cut on my roll, off my roll. So I'm going to show you guys that now. I'm going to switch over to... I have to add in my iPad. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. This is the easier, easier, easy subly roll. Um, you can buy it in the pre-cut sheets or you can buy it in the roll, whichever is easiest. If you're going to use a lot of it, I would suggest the roll just because it's cheaper and all you have to do is cut it to size. Okay. Um, there's two sides. You see, we have a shiny side and we have a matte side. You print on the matte side. This side is the carrier sheet. You print on this side. So this is the side that the ink is going to go on to. I need to cut a 13 by 19. This is a little bit over 19 inches anyway. So I just have to cut at 13 here. And I just use my ruler. I don't have that long one. That's what I need. I need a long ruler. Okay. So now this is our 13 by 19 sheet of paper, okay? So we are gonna go ahead. I'm gonna show you how I put it in my printer. I know a lot of people said that they have issues um, getting it to go through their printer. I have the, this is the Epson EcoTank 8550 which I have com converted to sublimation. All I do is put it through the back here, matte side facing forward, because when you're putting it in the rear feed, it's gonna come basically like this, okay? And it's gonna come out like that. So we're putting matte side facing out, and I'm just gonna put it right inside here. Let me go grab my laptop. Okay, and then let me show my screen again. All 
right, and then we are going to send to printer and I will show you my settings. So this is the little print setup that comes up. We're gonna go over to properties. Um, like I said, I am using the Super B, which is the 13 by 19. This is going to be borderless, portrait, plain paper, bright white paper, color, and we're using the best quality. If you go over to more options, I do turn off the bi-directional printing. It helps with the, the, the smearing and then mirror is turned off because we're using Caesar Easy Subly, okay? Then we're gonna select okay, and then we're gonna push okay. And it's gonna go ahead and print. Now y'all, I did this earlier and there was no issues. So I better not have any issues today, right now. Are you able to use inkjet? Um, I have a video where I did a comparison. I did use inkjet and I use sublimation ink. Yes, you are able to use inkjet. I will say though, um, it the colors don't pop as much, but you can use it. Now, I did remove my rollers. These are my <laughs> these are my rollers. I know I saw somebody say that you wanted to know how to take them out without breaking it. Um, when it's done printing, I'll show you. I did record it, so I'm doing a video on this as well, and I will show you. I'm also doing a video. It's going to be an updated video on this printer, like do I still like it type thing. And in that video, I'm going to show you how to remove these rollers. I'll see if I can kind of show you how to do it now. When you're pulling these rollers out, yes, it is going to feel like you're about to break it, but you're not. You're not going to break it. Just pull it, okay? Just like a Band-Aid, just pull these things out. It is going to feel like you're about to break it, um, but you're not. Uh, yep, Shay Shay, I go live every Monday at 7. I have the um I have the hippo ink. I use the hippo ink when you use um why is it not that vibrant? That might be your uh settings. Um so I take out the rollers because it causes street marks. Um with sublimation ink, because it takes longer to dry than it does like inkjet. So this printer was technically made for inkjet ink. So when you convert it and you're using this printer for something that it's technically not made for, um, you know, you're going to have issues. So the rollers, because inkjet ink dries quicker than sublimation ink, the rollers would make strict marks and cause things to cause the images to smear. So if you take the rollers out, then you don't have that smearing issue. Now, if you're going to use this printer as a regular inkjet print printer, don't touch your rollers. Leave the rollers alone. The rollers are meant for regular inkjet. If you're gonna convert this to sublimation, then yes, I would say take the rollers out. Um, I first saw people doing it when they were converting this printer to a DTF printer. Um, they were taking the rollers out, but I always had so many issues with my rollers smearing. And you can kind of see on here, like, this is one of the rollers, the ink on the roller. Like, it's actually still kind of coming off on my finger. But these are the rollers. You see how much ink is on there? It would cause smearing on my images. So that's why I took them off. And I don't, now I don't have any more roller marks or anything like that. That would also help with, um, like if you're doing the sublimation DTF hack, where you're putting sublimation ink on a, uh, on DTF film, if you take the rollers off, you don't get those smear marks, those roller marks. So taking the rollers off just gets rid of the roller mark issue that you would have 
using um, sublimation ink. Yeah, I didn't have these issues when I was using my 8550. I only had the issues when I switched to the wide format. So I'm not sure if it has anything to do with that. Um, but when like when I was using my 8550, I didn't have issues with roller marks because I had, which is a smaller version of this one. I converted that one first. Um, and I never had any issues with like the roller marks. But then when I got the 8550, I had issues with my roller marks, with roller marks, so. All right, and there's our image so far. Now, sublimation ink is heat activated, okay? So when it comes out, it's going to look dull. However, even with your colors looking dull, your print should still look clear, okay? Like it shouldn't look blurry. So, yes, my image looks dull, but it does not look blurry. If your image looks blurry, that means that you have an issue somewhere. That looks very clear, very legible. It just looks dull because um, uh, sublimation ink is heat activated. Okay? And y'all forgot to tell me to turn my press on. That's okay. I'm going to turn it on now. I'm going to turn off my sign because sometimes my sign with my Romeo, with my heat press going, baby, it's not going to happen. <sighs> okay. I need my cutting mat. You're welcome, Lucia. I'm glad you got it. Okay. Sorry, you guys. I'm moving the camera around. I don't have a whole bunch of little cameras all over the place. I only got one. Okay, so with this, it's going to be big, be bigger than the mat. That's okay. Because I'm going to show you on Leonardo Design Studio that it's okay. Now, my ink is not completely dry. So, I'm not going to press over my ink. Again, like with this, I do have issues to where my ink doesn't necessarily completely dry. And I just kind of work around that. Okay, so we have it on the mat here. I'm going to switch over to the Romeo. Now, this is where I have issues with my ink and the smearing and things like that. And I'll show you how I get around that. Y'all, the downfall to having a larger office is that I have to walk. Like, I actually have to walk to go get my laptop because it's on the other side of the room. You can't just turn around and grab it. <laughs> it's like, you know, blessing and a curse. Okay, so loading this in, it has to be loaded in. This arrow has to be, has to line up here, but it has to go the same way that Caesar Romeo was showing you. So let me bring Romeo or Leonardo Design Studio back up. Okay, so let me see if I can split the screen. Hold on one second. Y'all, why do my screens don't ever want to split?
I can never get my screen to like my layouts do not work. And it's so annoying. Well, I guess we're just gonna have to do it this way. Okay, so the way that Romeo or the way that you have you loaded in is the same way that it's showing in Caesar Romeo. I'm, I'm sorry, in uh, Leonardo Design Studio. Okay, so up here, the little arrow, the little arrow. This is the way that we have to put it in and the blade has to line up with this, this arrow right down here. My pin trollers are open. And I'm lining up my mat on the side. Oh, y'all can't see. Hold on. I'm lining up my mat right here against the arrows on the side of Romeo. And then I want to close my pin trollers. Now, for the I have two rollers on this mat. One, and they're on the very, very edge. So this one is going to roll over my registration marks, and this one isn't going to roll over anything. So if anything smears, it's going to be my registration marks after it's already red, if that makes sense. Hopefully it makes sense. Now I'm going to use my keypad to go ahead and line up my blade. And again, we're not going to mirror and we're going to go ahead and cut. And then it's going to read the registration marks. Typically, I always have an issue with the camera reading my registration marks on this side. I don't know why. It always reads these two really good, but not these two. And when it doesn't read it, all you have to do is just adjust it on your keypad. It's no big deal. Well, it hasn't been a big deal for me thus far. Thank you, Sylvia. I dried on the heat press prior to cutting. Yep, you can do that too. A lot of people were saying that theirs doesn't dry. A lot of the times mine doesn't dry either. Um, but this is just how I get around it if it doesn't dry. Okay, so it is going to have a whole bunch of little cuts there. So I'm going to let it kind of do its thing. And then we'll get our... Oh, wait, no, I have to wait for this to finish so that we can do our vinyl. So for the vinyl, I'm thinking the background letters I'm going to do in block. Just to kind of give the shirt some texture and some dimension. So this is the iron-on flock, which is very different from rhinestone flock. I know we do a lot of rhinestones on this channel on Monday nights. Baby, it's not rhinestone flock, okay? It's not rhinestone flock. This is the iron-on flock. The difference is the, um, the rhinestone flock has adhesive on the back. It's sticky. This is not. This is iron-on. So very, very different. Please don't confuse the two. But I'm going to use the iron-on flock. And I think I might want to do puff. So to remove it, I'm going to open up the pin rollers and we're just going to slide it out. And there's our image. And I actually didn't get any smearing this time. Sometimes I get my, my registration mark smear, but this time it didn't. So it looks really good. Now let's make sure it cut right. We're going to go ahead and weed it. And you just weed it the way that you would vinyl. Oh, 
Oh yeah, that looks really good. And there's our image. And we're just gonna pick it up once we're all done. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. And we'll set that off to the side for now. And then we'll get our block. Um, okay, where's my phone? Gotta make sure. If you guys have any questions, just let me know. We're gonna go back to the design and then we're gonna move this out the way because we are probably going to be done with it. But I'm not gonna delete it. I'm just gonna move it out the way for now. And we're going to bring this is going to be our vinyl file, vinyl cut file. And then we're going to uncheck print and cut. So this is going to be cut. Okay, um, and then we're going to send design and hit send. Now, this I'm going to make separate just because it's going to be a separate kind of file. So for example, this is going to be flock. And we do have to mirror this, this is an iron one. So we're gonna mirror. This is gonna be flock, and I think, y'all, what should I do? Should I do puff or should I do brick? Y'all comment, puff or brick? Should I do puff or should I do brick? I'm going to get my block loaded onto the mat though. Okay, so this is going to go down to 12 and I'm using a 12 by 24 mat and I'm just going to cut both pieces of um, vinyl on the same mat. Especially because I see y'all comments in brick, so brick and Flock can be pretty much cut on the same setting. Okay. I think I'm gonna do, I'll, I'll do brick and I'll do white, white brick since we're doing red flock. I don't think my flock wants to stay down. I'm going to have to tape it because I don't have time. I don't have time. I got to be coming up while it's cutting. So I'm just placing some tape here because my uh, mat is not sticky right there. Okay. There's our flock. And then here is the brick. I'm just gonna do some white brick. And this is gonna go right here. This, yeah, this is gonna go right here. Now brick and flock are both very, very thick. So they have to be cut on higher settings. Like for me, I cut it even higher than a uh, glitter. It's very thick. Okay. And then I'm gonna load this into my machine. I'm actually gonna turn this. So 
And then I'm gonna do a quick area test to make sure I got this lined up right. Why does my thing move so slow when it's doing an area test? Does anybody else do, do that? Like how slow it's moving? That looks good. And I'm pretty sure the other one is right. So I'm just going to click send to cutter. Okay. Hey everybody popping in. How are you guys? Hey everybody watching. Everybody in the bushes. All right, so my heat press is set to 311. That's the temperature for the Caesar Easy Subly. And then for the brick, it's 310. So let me double check for flop. So I can figure out what needs to be pressed um, first and second. So, uh, Glock says 325 for 15 seconds. Okay. So, it's about the same. Y'all, I didn't change my cut settings. Lord... I forgot to change my cut settings. Hopefully I did not mess up this flock because I forgot to change my cut settings. Yep, the arrow was on the printing cut that we did. Okay, so the Block looks good. I literally forgot that I hate weeding flock until I started weeding the flock. I like how it looks on the shirt, but I hate weeding it. It doesn't like, I don't know. Oh, weed's weird. Are you guys working on anything tonight? Oh, for those who buy rhinestones, the buy-in, the rhinestone buy-in is going on. It started on the 29th, right, Eve? It has to be because I got my cart started, so it got to be going on. Come on, flock. Don't embarrass me.
my Romeo has been having issues too with the with the Wi-Fi. I don't know what happened because I had no issues before with the Wi-Fi. And then one day I came into the office and it was a wrap. Romeo said, I will Wi-Fi no longer. That's why I have to keep carrying my laptop around because, you know, Oh, I just ripped this letter, y'all. Dang it. One in my mouth. It's all right. We're going to make it work. Um, But yeah, it just said, I will Wi-Fi no more. We done. I'm done. And I can't get it to connect. So I have to, um connected to my laptop which is like super inconvenient because I use my table that's on the other side of the room and then I have to actually get up and connect it with the uh, USB cord oh lord Jesus is the flock worth it I could have just used some brick I don't like fussy vinyl now. Okay, make sure I'm not missing anything. Sorry, I'm not looking at the church, y'all. This, this flop is doing the most. The absolute most. I think I got it, though. that one that's okay that is okay why because it's for me well my husband but that's okay okay so there's the flap <sighs> I don't know. Almost done, y'all. Almost done. Brick is waiting way better. And this dog on fuck with. I'm ready. I don't have my trash can by me. That's why I'm just throwing it over here. <laughs> All right. Let's see. And there's our brick. All right. So we are all set to press. 
I'm going to have to use the Frisco brand um, to pick this up because I do not have any more of the easy, um, easy subly uh, transfer tape. Now, they don't have, or I didn't see, you know, I could have very well missed it, but I did not see a roll of the mask, which, if they do not have it, Patrick, if you want to catch the replay, or if you're here in the bushes, we need a roll of the, ma of the uh, masking. That would be great, because I only saw the sheets. I would personally, you know, invest in a roll because I, I actually use the easier, the easier. I keep saying easier. I use um, easier probably a lot. So doing this the same way we do rhinestones, U shape. I'm going to turn it over and squeegee the back. And then remove the backing from the image. If I can squeeze it right. See, that's the thing about the Frisco. It doesn't hold it. there's our image so now we're gonna go over here and we're going to press I don't have my ring light sorry guys I can take Leonardo off the screen now though. okay and I'm just gonna press this onto a gildan uh, black shirt um, and then you want to make sure that you are pre-pressing because with you know getting things to adhere to your garment you want to make sure there's no moisture in your shirts I'm going to do a 10 second pre press and then we're at 311. I'm going to knock out my fit now on a 55 hour rhinestone template. Good luck, Miss C. What's the different, what's the purpose of using iron one flock versus br brick? Um, so it just gives the shirt different textures. That's really all that it is. Um, it's a, the flock, the brick, it's a different kind of vinyl. Um, the flock kind of feels like weight. And then the brick elevates off the shirt. So... It just gives the shirt some dimension. Now, I'm not going to press this first. I just need to line it up on the shirt to make sure that everything aligns the way that it needs to. So that is going to be where the brick is going to go. And then I'm going to line the flock up with it. 
we're going to press the flock first. This is the piece I ripped. That's all right. We're going to press the block first. Y'all, look. There is a purple flock dot on here. Where the heck? Where the heck? Where the heck did that flock dot come from? I ain't had purple flock all night. And we're going to press this 311 for 20 seconds. Do I haven't touched purple flock all night. Where did that flock dot come from? They just be hiding. The flock dots are really the, the kings of the bushes. They be waiting on you to do something. I'm just using a shirt here to kind of pull some of the heat out because I don't, I actually don't remember if this is a um, warmer cold peel. Oh, this thing's gonna look really, really nice. Cause this suede, I call it suede. This block already looks good. Okay. Now we're going to press our image. If it lets us get it on here without crinkling up on us. And we're just layering this in like we do anything else you just want to stretch out the shirt if you need to to get it to layer in there okay hold on Okay. I'm gonna put this back down to 15 seconds, 311 for 15 seconds. And this is going to be a warm peel. Hey, everybody watching, everybody in the bushes, how are you guys doing? Look at that color. Look at the color. Y'all see how I just went from dull to popping? Where's my shirt? Here it is. Like I said, it's a warm peel. So I'm just going to pull some of the heat out. amazing and then the last layer is going to be our brick which is just going to give it a little bit more dimension i 
I'm going to cover the image with some parchment paper. This has to be at 20 seconds. So I'm going to put my timer back up to 20. And we're going to press it one more time. And we should be done. <laughs> oh yeah, I need him to wear this out the house every time, every time he leave out the house. Nope, that piece now all the way down. I actually get anxiety, not anxiety, but I get upset when something says it's a cold peel because I am so impatient. I cannot stand waiting for things to cool off so you can peel it. Look at that. Okay, all that work. And was it worth it? It was. Baby, this flock looks good. I know y'all can't really see the flock. It just looks like regular red vinyl. But it's um it's got like a suede texture. And then the brick is y'all probably can't see that either. The brick is elevated off the shirt. Okay. So the this is the brick, which kind of gives it like um so you know how like puff kind of puffs off the shirt. Brick just kind of like, it looks like 3D kind of, like 3D blocks. It elevates off the shirt, but it doesn't puff. And then the um, flock is like, it's like a suede. So this is texture, this is dimension, and then this is color poppage. Okay, so we got three different things going on, but it came out so cute. I need him to wear this every time he leave about the house, y'all. Every time. Every time he walk out. Every time he walk out, he wearing the same shirt every day. You wearing that again? Yep. He sure is. He sure is. Okay, I'm going to go on over to the uh, to the other computer. All right, let me see. Can y'all hear me? Let me know if you guys can hear me. I think you can. But yes, I need him to wear this every time he lead a house child, okay? Every time. Same shirt every day. But yeah, I love that. I love how I came out. I was thinking about doing one with um my kids and then the words being and then saying mommy with puff because I like puff. So I might do my kids and then the word be mommy and then all my kids. Okay, color poppage. I love e Caesar Easy Subway. This is definitely like if you don't have access to DTF. Now, I am going to try this again with DTF for sure. Um, I just mm, got to get my printer together. Okay. As soon as I get my printer together, I'm going to try this again with DTF. Um, but I was getting DMs, people asking me like how, what's an alternative that they could do if they don't have access or they don't want to order transfers because you can order transfers too from somebody who does it, um, who has a DTF printer. You can order a transfer like this. You can order, and I don't know how it would work if you wanted to layer with vinyl. 
I like the layering with the vinyl just because for me, I like the I like the versatility that vinyl gives, even though you can do this entire image in DCF. Okay. But it's going to be one note. It's going to be one DTF image, which if you're selling, that's cool, right? That's that's going to be the most cost effective way to do it. Um, that's what's going to give you the highest profit margin is if you're doing the whole image DTF. If you go this way, well, I don't know, because I would say charge more because it's more work, right? You have to weed. Y'all saw me struggling to weed this flock. Um, there's more material. So you need to charge for all of that. I personally think that people would like this style with the with the vinyl just because, like I said, the way that I know the camera's not picking it up, the flock, the, um, the brick and the flock, the camera's not picking it up. But in person, like, I can see it. I can see that this is suede. This is a different texture. I can see that this is elevated off the shirt. You know what I'm saying? So I guess it's just... Um, What you're willing to do, basically. All right, I'm scrolling to see if there was any questions I missed. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to make that a universal template. Really? How would I make it a universal template? I don't even know how I would do that. If I can figure it out, I'll definitely make it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Period. <laughs> hey, Ann. Welcome to the live. Thank you, guys. Now you can make this with the free. So um, I don't think so. Like if you can, if your images already have the background removed, if um, when I was designing them, I was removing the background from all of my images. I do believe that the background remover is only available in the pro version. I don't think you can remove the background in the free version. So if you import your images with a transparent background already, then yes, you can do this. Um, but if you need to remove the background, if you only have the free version, you'll have to remove the background somewhere else and then bring them in. Exactly, Jackie. I have to make one for every day. <laughs> Ms. Joy, I will definitely work on making a universal um, shirt or a template. Colors match everything. No excuses. They really do. Black, right, white, and red. Um, Shay Shay, the difference between this and DTF, DTF would be one. It would just be one solid image. It would be one press, one peel. You're done. So the whole, and it, it would be one note, almost like um, like this, how this was Caesar Easy Subly was one press, one peel. If the whole thing was DTF, it would be one big print, it would be one, it would all print out as one image. It would be one press, it would be one peel, and then you're done. That's it. Like how I had to do one press for the flock, one press for the brick, one press for the C, um, easy subly. With DTF, it wouldn't be that. It would be one press because it's all one solid image. Um, but like I said, it's going to be one note. It's going to be one layer, one texture, one, it's going to be one note. Um, this way you get the different textures, you get the different dimensions. So it really just depends on how much work you want to put into it. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. That's all we have for this live. I definitely wanted to um, show you guys how to create the image in Canva and then um, 
how to create, like do the knockout because again, you don't, you can't layer the easy subly on top of like, if you were going to do flock, you can't layer it on top. It's, it's going to get all crinkly and look weird and don't do it. Okay. Do not layer this on top of anything because I've tried it. I've tried it. It looks weird. It looks crinkly. Just don't do it. Okay. Make sure you do your knockout. If you're going to, um, do this where you're doing multiple layers, make sure you do the knockout method that I've showed you guys. Um, what else? I was saying something else. But yeah, I wanted to show you guys the how to bring your image over to Leonardo Design Studio, knock out your text, um, layer with a couple different vinyl options. You could do flock and puff. I'm probably going to do puff because I like puff, but this was for my husband. So we did brick. Brick looks really, really good. I think brick is a very masculine vinyl. Um, I like it, but I think it's just a very masculine vinyl. When you put it on men's shirts, I think it just gives it a little oomph, okay? Um, but yeah, hopefully I was able to answer some questions about the Easy Subly. Um, everything I use is linked down below except for the vinyl. I can go back and link the vinyl. I did get it from Heat Transfer Warehouse. So if you click my link for the Caesar Easy Subly, you can just add um, to your cart the brick and the flock. This is also by Caesar. So Caesar Brick, Caesar Flock, Caesar Easy Subly. So if you click the link for the Caesar Easy Subly, just add the brick and the block to your cart from that page and it's fine. Or you can go to the search bar, but I will link it um, when this video is over. Yep, that's true. Um, there's a lot of people who, who make a lot of money doing customized shirts like this. And I mean, they charge, I mean, their prices start at $45 and people pay. People pay for sure. So I would definitely say if you if you want to go the custom route and you do like custom forms or doing custom shirts like this, I mean, it got to start at $45 at least. Yes, Miss Joyce from uh, Caesar. It's called Caesar Easy Subly. It's linked in the... um description box. Oh, Miss Sandra, everything gets unplugged. Okay. Unplugged. I ain't walking out of here with that on ever again. All right, you guys. Um, So next week, I actually will not be on next week, you guys. I do have a video that I'll premiere, but I'm not going to be live next week. I'm going to Cancun with my friends. So I will be in Cancun next Monday. Um, I'll probably do a premiere, um, but I'm not going to go live. Um, Ms. Joy, if you, if you don't have any problems with your prints, I would say leave the, um, leave the rollers alone. I'll go ahead and take them off if you're having like smear marks or roller marks. But um, if not, then I would just say leave it alone until it, if it's not broke, don't fix it type thing. I took mine off because I do get roller marks in my print. So that's why I took mine off. All right, you guys, you guys have a great night. Thank you for watching. Thank you for chatting with me. Um, I will not see you guys next week, but I will see you the week after that when I come back from my, uh, vacation. Like I said, I probably will have a premiere next Monday. So I think I have, um, I think it's going to be a bling video that I'll premiere next Monday. It'll be like a 20, 30 minute video that I premiere, but I will not be live. Okay. I will see y'all in two weeks. Good night.